drunk. Oh, it makes sense. I mean, Bernard's living with Mum. That happened pretty quickly. So who knows what she got up to when she was young and keen. This is our mother. Oh, think about it, Arv. Those hot summer nights. Roy gets up for, say, uh, a glass of water. He forgets he's just in his wife runs. And Mum's left the door open on account of the heat. You're disgusting. It happens, mate, believe me. I've been around the block more than once. Saint Roy was no saint. Next item. We have an objection to the reclassification of Smiley Gets a Gun. Mr McHugh doesn't want us to give it an R certificate. Does anyone agree with him? Perhaps Harvey would like to articulate his reasons. Well, it's a classic. I mean, I used to watch that movie on TV all the time. It's got Chips Rafferty in it. And Chinese selling opium to the Aborigines. This directly contravenes our Indigenous cultural integrity policy. Just about a kid who wants an air gun. Ah, oh, yes. The gun. A phallic signifier. We are treated to the sight of a male child wielding a firearm, tragically prefiguring Vietnam. This piteous Australian youth is a metaphor for the young of all ages trapped in the vortex of war. Any further comments, Harvey? Right, moving on. Next, we come to the documentary on Japanese cuisine. I don't see any objections here, so this one's cleared for general classification. Next, the Australian rules doco, high-level violence and homoeroticism. Excuse me, uh, the Japanese one. I objected. Oh. We must hear Harvey out. He does represent the man in the street. Well, the documentary is offensive. It, it, it made me sick. <laughs> well, your report isn't in our papers. Well, it should be. I put it in to be collated. Well, it's not here. You should have followed that up. I've been so busy. Oh. Here it is. Um, I objected because it shows the Japanese eating monkey brains. Won't that upset people? It's a subtle form of racism to censor an ethno-specific tradition on the grounds that it might offend Caucasians. But thanks for drawing it to our... I'm afraid time's up. We're having brunch with the Fijian Film Cooperative. We'll have to postpone these classifications till next time. I can't believe I'm actually here doing your bunions where a saint once lived. He isn't a saint. I wish he wouldn't say that. You'll jinx his chances. Frank showed me Roy's photo in the Catholic Tribune. He looked just like Robert Redford. Why do the cute ones always have to get the calling? And what happened today with Brock and Clarissa? Do you miss the loved and the lonely? They made us take down the aerial. Heritage homes can't have TV antennas. Clarissa had to tell Brock the truth about Zach. In every woman's life, she said, there's always one big love she never gets over. It's as if she has to be hurt just once so that she can truly value the ones that follow. Imagine having a love that was so forbidden you couldn't tell anyone about it. Wonderful. Let's pop again for a smoke. Don't see how smoking in here could make the place any less holy. Neither do I. Council's orders. All right, if I join you? Not very comfortable, is it? What? The bed in the sleep out. It's OK. Oh, it'll get to you long term, believe me. Mum's not likely to change her mind. What about? Letting you back into her bedroom. You see, we're a very religious family. So if you want to move out, well, we wouldn't think any less of you. Well, I'm relieved to hear that, Frank. To tell you the truth, I'd have been concerned if you didn't try and keep me away from Monica. But it's good to know you value your mum. So you should. She's done a real good job with you kids. Yeah. Thanks. Look, she, she wants to sleep alone. I respect that. I'll stay out here forever if it makes her happy. You see, most relationships, they fail because the partners get impatient. Really? Where'd you learn that? At my dump group. Deserted and unmarried marital partners. We have these self-help nights for enforced singles. And we also have a counselling service for uh, singles with marital problems. <laughs> I'll bear that in mind for my mates. Oh, it's the truth, I forgot. Monica asked me to scrub out the bathroom. I love a happy ending. And what could be happier than a Japanese family sitting down to a meal of baby seal sushi? You said McHugh would classify the film. McHugh objected. Did a good analysis, too. Violent, offensive, racist. 
When did this happen? This morning. Of course, his decision is open to review. No, it has to come from him. Yes. It took me a while to work out why. When the finger's pointed at you, you'll simply say it was bureaucratic bungling. An overworked trainee who had a lapse of judgment. I don't know what you're talking about. Devouring passions will outrage the delegates. The Japanese will withdraw from the rice deal unless they receive a full apology. And when has our Prime Minister ever apologised? He wouldn't say sorry if he shot God in the foot. He doesn't deserve public support. It's not too late for the records to show that Harvey McHugh approved the film. You'd do that for me? Let's look on this as a farewell gesture. Like the farewell gesture you gave me once when I woke up to a single rose and a letter of promotion. You got what you wanted. We both did. All this talk about Venice has made me realise something. There's no Australian film office there. I don't know how we overlooked that, so I might have to go on a fact-finding mission. First-class airfare, full accommodation and departmental credit cards for the first few years, of course. Ciao. Monica. Monica. Go to sleep, Bernard. I only wanted to sit on the end of your bed. No. Good night. It's not fair on them, Dad. I don't like keeping secrets. I wish you could talk, you'd tell me what to do. If God was angry because of Roy and me, would he really punish my family? Is that why Harvey isn't doing so well and why Frank and Gina aren't so happy anymore? I wish Roy Mullane really was a saint, then he might help us. Father Nelson, please come in. I wasn't expecting visitors. Good. I was hoping I'd find you alone. Well, please sit down. I need to trouble you again. You see, a lot of my work is like a jigsaw puzzle. I reassemble the pieces of a prospective saint's life. But a few of Roy's pieces are missing. And I need your help to find them. Will you help me, please? Even if it's difficult. Yes, I'll try. Do you think I could have a look at the room where Roy used to sleep? It's Harvey's room now, but Roy's wardrobe's still there. How do you tell if he should be a saint? Saints bring people closer to God. Do you think Roy did? Um, oh, what a mess. I'm sorry. Do you smoke? No. Do you mind if I do? It's the only vice we're allowed. What else did Roy leave behind? That's it? He said it was too luxurious for a religious brother to have. May I? Oh, it hasn't worked for years. I remember when he left. He gave it to me. And he said... It's a miracle. You loved him, didn't you? He had this wonderful smile, made my knees turn to jelly. Is it a sin to have loved a saint? Sometimes love brings us closer to God. Here are tomorrow's schedules, the new guidelines and the minutes of yesterday's meeting. And don't forget the focaccia orders. Okay, thanks. 
Hi, Arv. Hi. Here you are, nice and strong. Would you like a butter shortbread? No butter, please. <laughs> Arv, did you ask Dr. Voisner about your twitch? Yeah, yeah. He said there's nothing to worry about. Show me. Play the movies that you get to watch? Yeah. Any Mel Gibson? <laughs> I doubt it. You never know. Oh. Sorry. It's all right. I'll clean it up. <laughs> Howard's rear end, Lassie come home and lick me, devouring passions. Harvey, what are you watching? Show me. Struth. This says I've passed it. I have to see Catherine. I, I, think, I think there's been a mistake. She's out for the day. Excuse me. wasn't blood at all. Just plain old ferric oxide from up in the tree. An old wind chime. Not a miracle at all. Perfectly natural, I'm afraid. Then he won't be canonised. Poor Roy. He'd be so disappointed if he knew. <laughs> May I? Maybe he sent me here to help you, Monica. To find out what's been troubling you all these years. I've already confessed it. But you don't feel any easier, do you? It'd be a shame to let Roy's efforts go to waste. Who knows where it could have ended up that day? Hey! Well, you're kissing too long. If it's more than seven seconds, it's a sin. Don't worry, I'm timing them. Well, how can you time them with your eyes shut? It takes a second to say one elephant, so I say it seven times. One elephant. <laughs> we shouldn't be here by ourselves. I worry there might be too many elephants. I love you, Monica. Let's... let's stampede. No! You want to be a brother. You said you had the calling. Don't. I'm trying to be strong. You can trust me, Monica. I want to marry you. If I really had the calling, God would have sent me a sign. One elephant, two elephants. Who knows where it might have ended? But nothing happened, did it? Well, only because of the storm. He was thinking of being a brother, and all the time I was having desires. So was he. So does every human being. I think 25 years of guilt is enough, Monica. Perhaps that's what Roy was trying to tell you. Do you think so? Do you think he still remembers, even in heaven? Why not? Isn't it great? TV again and just in time for the footy. Roy's not going to be a saint after all. Yeah, why not? Oh, that blood at his grave was just rust from some... Perfect, perfect, perfect! perfect. Oh, look at that. Best reception we've ever had. And that's what I'd call a miracle. ...the theatre read during the screening. The film, Devouring Passions, is a no-holds-barred look at Japanese eating habits. Outraged Japanese delegates have demanded a full apology from the Prime Minister or they'll withdraw from the SPAT trade talks and cancel the rice deal. This film is an insult to the people of Japan. Your Prime Minister must apologize or else could seppuku. I cannot begin to express my horror at the screening of this documentary, and I share the anger, the pain and the hurt of my Japanese colleagues. Why did the Why film did they... get through the censorship office? Well, it's pointless to blame the public service. It's my department and therefore my fault. How, How is it? did it happen? 
An inexperienced trainee cleared it. He shouldn't have been classifying, but because of staff ceilings, there was no one else to do it. And How will this affect sir. the rights deal? Well, I'll do what I can to save this deal. I've banned the film, and I've offered my profound regrets. The Japanese people have a saying that every grain of rice is the home of seven gods. I can only hope that one of these gods is forgiving. And why won't the Prime Minister delegate to make the Prime Minister, Prime Minister to persuade sense? him? Well, the Prime Minister deeply regrets. Then why won't he say this? Why should the Prime Minister get a big dismiss? Here, so week's rent and my share of the phone, I'm clearing out. Like a chip? Oh, yeah, thanks. Ooh. It's not that I'm not happy here. I couldn't be happier if I was in Disneyland. You might need salt on that. Uh, oh. Don't even look me in the eye these days. It's just how I knew it was over with Bonnie. I'll send you money for Fury Joe. When all this business with Roy blew up, I started to feel him beside me again. Even though he won't be a saint, I don't think I'd like him to know about us. Why? Well, because for you, it's only physical. And Roy wouldn't approve of that. Well, what gave you that idea? First time I saw you bending over to sweep up the floor, I knew you were the one for me. You're just saying that to cheer me up. No, honest. I like the way you cook. I like the way you smell. I like the way you put doilies under everything. I guess I love you, Mon. Really? Now, I don't want to hear it if it isn't the truth. Well, that physical stuff is the last thing on my mind. How long do those chips have to stay in there? Ages. Maybe all afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> You've wrecked 50 years of trade between Australia and Japan and knocked 15 points from the Prime Minister's personal approval rating. Not a bad afternoon's work, McHugh. But I objected to the film. That's not what the minutes say. Well, I'm sure if you ask Catherine... Catherine's she... gone overseas on leave. It was either that or be sacked thanks to you. Clear out your desk. I'm transferring you. You're not going to dismiss me? Oh, McHugh, I'd love to. But the Japanese would be more insulted. They'd accuse me of blaming a helpless clerk for my mistakes. And that would be dishonourable. So instead, I'm going to bury you in the blackest pit of the public service. Report for work at the family court. That's all, McHugh. But, Minister... I said, that's all. Cheer up, Hearth. It's not the first time the service has shafted you. They say the more it happens, the easier it gets. Well, they're wrong. I wish I was hard and tough like Catherine. Then you wouldn't be you. If the public service didn't have nice people, the country would fall apart. Nice people finish last. And they're never made permanent. Nonsense. Well, well, well. Look at this. Not another cockroach. No. It's you. Oh, I've never read tea leaves like it. This is great, huh? It's your future. Well... The next year, at least. What does it say? Somewhere in this building is a great big desk and trees. That must mean a view of the park. Wow. Two telephones. Plus, you get newspapers. Uh, only grade five sixes get newspapers. And an elephant. Must be an ornament. See, Harv, it was all for the best what? that you got turfed out of censorship. I don't know. Maybe there aren't any miracles anymore. They might have died out like the dinosaurs. Harv... That's not like you. Within a year, you'll be a grade five, six. It's what the leaves say. And I've never known Lipton's to lie. Marissa was right. First big love you never forget. I remember you in your duffel coat and your hair all blown in the wind. The day you saved those kittens from drowning. And us holding hands as we queued for sound of music. The 
you walked out after 20 minutes. You said Maria von Trapp should have stayed in the convent. I knew then I'd lost you. I knew you had the calling. I'm not surprised you died, Roy. I can't blame God for wanting you. Anyway, that's it. Better go, I'll miss my bus. So, I don't know what else to say. So, goodbye, Roy. Hope you like the flowers. The damnation of Harvey McHugh continues tomorrow. Join us tonight for the life and times of Australia's second longest serving Prime Minister and the inside story of the key events and achievements of his government, told by the key players in the premiere of The Howard Years, 8.30 tonight on ABC One.